Good evening and welcome to Music Scrap, the Musical Scrapper. Tonight my YouTube is going to be showing the program Inkscape. This is a free downloadable program, um, drawing program, that can be used on Windows or Mac. I have a Mac. Um, I'm going to show you where to find it to download and um, Mac users have <coughs> an extra step that they have to do in order to run the Inkscape. So to find your Inkscape you go to Google and just type in Inkscape I-N-K-S-C-A-P-E and download. Now I am not a pro digital artist or anything. I've learned how to use Inkscape by watching online YouTube videos and I use it to create some stencil designs and some other things that I can cut with my Cricut using shortcuts a lot. Um, any program that will um, use SVGs you can use this Inkscape for because that's what it does. It creates SVG files. And so, um, oops, sorry. There you get downloading scape. All right, so then you do your release here. You find the one that's appropriate for your um, computer and download it. Okay, the Mac, the Windows, all right, version. Now, um, if you are a Mac user, you also have to download a program called X Quartz. X Quartz is an open source program that will make your Mac read this Windows software. So um, you just go here and download the Quartz 2.7.5 and install it and install your Inkscape. Now let's go back to my desktop here. The first time you go to this is what the icon looks like on a Mac. Not sure what it looks like on Windows because I've never used it on Windows. Um, the first time on a Mac that you open your Inkscape you will get a message asking for the X Quartz program. Where is the X Quartz or the XII program? All right, and it when you install it, it installs into your utilities um, folder. So I have Maverick, so my application folder is down here. If you have an earlier version of Mac OS, you go to the Go and you go to your applications up here. So it depends on what OS you have. So I'm going to go. So the first time you open Inkscape and you get that message, where is the X Quartz? You click on your Applications folder, click on your Utilities, and click on your X Quartz to open it right there. Then the Inkscape always knows where it is every time it needs it. You only have to do that the first time, right? The Inkscape takes a little bit of time to open, so I'm going to show you how to open it. Now today I'm going to just show you a basic way of um, doing a couple of very simple clip art images to change them into an SVG so you can cut them on your cutter. <coughs> okay. So the first thing, once you have this open, is you have to have a file. So maybe you have a file saved on your computer that you want to change from the JPEG to. Now you can do photographs. There, there's a lot more involved to doing some photographs. So I'm not talking about that. Right now we're only going to, going to talk about clip arts. Okay. That are, so I won't be teaching you how to do a, you can do photographs in a certain way, but all right. So we're going to go to Im Google Images and let's do a flame. 
and I'm going to put clipart in because then you usually get more simple files. So let's find some flames here. All right, let's do, oh, let's do this one. Okay, so there's a cool flame file. I'm going to copy the image, close that window, and I'm going to paste it here. Now, one thing to know, this box here is my working area. I'm going to show you how to change the size of this working area. Up here, File, Document Properties. All right, mine um, defaults to A4. I'm assuming that the program does that automatically. So I'm just going to switch it to US letter. Let's say I want to cut a stencil. Now you can resize this file when you take it into your silhouette program or your shortcuts a lot or make the cut. All right, when you take it onto your mat, you can totally resize it. So it doesn't really matter that much for my purpose what size your document page is. I just like it to be letter. So you just click on letter, close the file. Okay. Now, now we have this flame. Now, this is not an SVG file. Okay. This is an image. Now, if you follow my mouse pointer down to the bottom here, you can see that it says an image 170 by 163 embedded in layer one. So there's only one layer to this image, okay? But it's an image and we don't want an image. Uh, SVG files are made of paths. And so we want it to be a path. And I'll show you the difference between an image and an SVG in a moment and why your cutter reads it. All right, so we want to make this a path. With this program, it's extremely easy. All you do is go up to path, okay, trace bitmap, okay, and update, okay, and now I have my file. Now, here's the thing. I'm pretty sure that the Silhouette software probably can trace your JPEG. I'm not sure because I don't have a Silhouette. I know that my new version of Shortcuts a Lot will do this part of what I do with Inkscape, but I have found it doesn't do it as well. I just, I don't know, maybe it's because I used Inkscape first. Maybe that's why I like it better, but the shortcuts a lot does have this option. Okay. All right. So, or the newest shortcuts a lot does. So I'm clicking. Okay. Now the thing is it deposits your path right on top. You can see that there's an image is something is selected here, but when you look down on the bottom, you'll notice it says path. Okay. But it has not replaced the image. It has put it right on top. So if you move this over, there's your path. If you click on this one, this one is your image. See down on the bottom, it says image. So let's move the image off. The only thing that shows up in your file is what's on the page. Okay. I always keep my original file here until I'm sure I don't totally mess up this one <laughs> and need it again and without having to go search for it. Um, okay, so let's see the difference between an image. First of all, you can see there's a difference. With the JPEG, you can see the ragged edges. In the image in the path, they're all smoothed out. Okay, now a path has what are called nodes. Um, nodes are the beginning and the ending basically of your lines and that's what tells the cutter to cut from here to here and then there to there, here to here. So that's what tells your electronic cutter to cut along that path. It's like making a dot to dot in digital format for your digital cutter. All right. So I'm going to show you the nodes. The second button in your toolbar is the node button. 
Okay, so I'm going to click that. Now, when you click your image with that node button selected, notice that my pointer changes to a long arrowhead, okay, instead of the arrow. It's just the long, narrow arrowhead. When I click on the image, I still have my dotted box around, no corners, but that's because there are no nodes to display. My cutter will not cut this because it can't read it. When I click on the path, you can see these are the nodes. This is what the digital, this is the digital dot to dot that your cutter cuts on. From this node to this node, this node to this node. All right. Um, now each of these nodes, when you click on a node, they also have little handles on them. You see that handle? That's not a node, that's a handle. And you can drag it out. Okay, and you can change the shape of your image. We'll talk about drawing images using nodes and stuff later. I don't want to do that. Your best friend in a computer program is edit, undo. There we go. All undone. So I'm going to go back to my pointer so I don't accidentally change something. All right, so now I'm sure I like this so I can get rid of it. Oops, sorry. Now, you lose your thing off screen. Hit either three. Oops, sorry, five. Number five. My apologies. Wrong one. Okay, so I've got my screen back here. Now, um, what I want to do next is, let's say, I want to make this smaller. I want to make a stencil, and I want to have four of these on the stencil. I don't copy and paste like you do in a Word document or in a print document. It doesn't work with a path. It won't copy and paste your path. All right? So what you do instead is you have to duplicate it. All right? So you have to duplicate everything, the image. So you go to Edit, Duplicate. It duplicates it right on top, then you drag it over. Let's say you want to flip this one. So up here on your toolbar here, menu, all right, this is rotate, rotate, flip horizontal, flip vertical. So let's hit, let's flip it vertically. There we go. Now let's say we want to duplicate both of these. So let's choose both. Edit, duplicate, drag it down. But like, oh, wait a minute. I want these ones to be opposite too. So keep them both chosen. And I'm going to go up here and I'm going to flip them vertically. There we go. So now you could save this, okay? And you could take it into your silhouette or your shortcuts a lot or make the cut software. And I don't know if I'm only mentioning those three because those are the only three I know. There may be more. But into your digital software for your electronic cutter. And then you can make this a stencil or you can cut it out in cardstock to use on a scrapbook page or any way you could cut it out of your electronic cutter to use it. All right, so I'm going to show you how to save it. File, save as. Now, this already shows a, pa a list of paths here for me because I've already saved something. So it always comes up for your last one. This is highlighted, so I'm going to change, I'm going to make the name Flames to, there's my computer. I'm going to the desktop going to into scrapbooking. I'm going into SVG files, wherever they are, there they are. Um, and then I'm going into Inkscape drawings. Actually, no, I'm going to do shapes, I think. Shapes. Yeah, shapes. That works. So flames too, because I already have a flames, I know. Okay, so I'm going to save it in my flames and click save. All right, so now that file is saved, okay? 
let's say, oh, sorry, five brings it back if you do that, like I do sometimes. All right, let's open a new file. Let's do one more. I'm going to do a simple one still. Um, this time I'm going to do a city scape silhouette. So you can get very okay. So look at all these fabulous silhouettes, city silhouettes. You know what I want to do? Toronto. So I'm just going to go up here. I'm going to type in Toronto because I'm from Canada and see what we get. There we go. Look at that. All right. So let's take in now, of course, this one has watermark on it, which means it's protected. Let's do, I don't want to do one that's complicated like this that has various colors, not yet for you anyway. So let's do this one. All right, where is my? Oh, there it is. Oh, hold on. Okay, that's one that, never mind. Sometimes you, that happens. You get ones that you can't use. So let's use this one. There we go. So I'm going to copy the image. You can save it if you want to have it for another time, but I can always find it again. And I'm going to actually change my properties. I want to make it landscape okay all right and right click and paste okay this is a pretty small image so it's probably going to distort when i increase it and it did a little bit not too bad we'll see how that tower turns out there it's pretty Okay, so this is an example of, because I had such a small image, let's do it. I'll show you, but it's not going to turn out that great. So path, trace bitmap. Let's see. Ah, it turned out not too bad. Okay, so you notice now that I'm trying to see this, I'm zoomed in too far. Well, here's your magnifying glass here. When you click on it, your menu bar here changes, your tools change. So I want to reduce the size so that I can see better. Then I go right back to my pointer and I can move it back. So here's your two images. Once again, my image, you can see down here, and my path okay and voila I can save this if I want I now have a cityscape of Toronto now notice that some of these buildings okay it doesn't look the same as the image once again, that's because it was such a small image to start with. So let's see if we can find a larger one. Let's go back. Now, so this was the one we used. And it says right there, 175 by 85. What's this one? All right, this one is 501 by 501. So right away, you see that that's a much better one. This one is 640 by 407. Okay, so it tells you, right, It's it'll tell you when you click on it, 
the resolution and you want to get one that's a good resolution so let's go to this first one because it's a better resolution so I'm going to copy the image go back to my page paste it enlarge it already you can see that you're getting a better it's a different view of the tower from a different part of the city but so now I'm going to go path trace bitmap update okay now remember now your path is the one that's on top but underneath okay is the image and like I said I usually keep it until so now you could cut this out make it a stencil you could cut it out black cardstock to use on a scrapbook page where you went to Toronto anything that your cutter can do now using your SVG file okay you can use this file for all right so thank you very much that's your very first simple and easy tutorial on Inkscape. I will be back for another one. Thank you very much. Goodbye.